everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. If you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Sammy. We do DIYs, wood signs, and there's always tons of laughter to be had. On today's video, we're gonna do Dollar Tree home decor. So if that's something you're into, then make sure to stick around and let's get right into it. All right, so this one's inspired by DIY Home and Crafts. I have been loving her vibe lately and I showed you guys this on my Amazon video. So if you didn't watch that, I'll link it down below. So I'm taking this canvas that I had already used. I am cutting the canvas off. And if you have a clean canvas, y'all keep that canvas. You could use heat transfer vinyl on it. Um, you could also get canvases from thrift stores as well that you can rip the canvas off. So, um, what I'm going to do is continue to take our canvas completely off. Then I'm going to grab the black poster board from Dollar Tree. You guys, when I tried this last week, I am hooked. I'm obsessed with how they turn out. I'm just going to take that frame. I'm going to take a craft knife and we're just going to cut around the frame and you can also trace it and cut it with scissors as well. So after I'm done doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the back of our frame, make sure it fits properly and that there's nothing hanging over our edges. Come on, any day now. Maybe I just wanted you guys to watch all that. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna cut that down to size. I'm gonna set that poster board aside and I'm gonna grab my Jacobian uh, stain. This is by Minwax and I'm going to use a microfiber cloth. If you do not have wood stain, you can just use any brown paint you have, dip a baby wipe in there, or you can even use brown paint, mix it with water and brush it on there and it'll give you the same effect. So now I'm going to take that poster board and I am just going to staple it on the back of my frame. You don't need a heavy duty stapler. You can use a household stapler, but like the way these turn out, they, you would never think this was poster board on the back of these. And I'm telling you, I'm obsessed and I'm going to make tons of them. All right, so after we're done with that, we're gonna take these plastic planters and I'm gonna cut it in half. Now just use the like papery kind of cardboard ones, but I didn't have those. So this, this was what I chose to do. Now, since these are plasticky and they are super thin, I didn't think they would hold up with me just lining them with hot glue. So my, um, what, did, what did I say? My solution, was to hot glue Jenga blocks to the sides of them. That way I can hot glue the Jenga block and stick that onto the poster board and knew, and that way I would know that it had something like substantial to hold on to. So you'll see right here, put that hot glue on those Jenga blocks, adhere it. And my sign is a lot smaller than Jazz's is, but I, I made it work and I think it turned out so adorable. So next you're just gonna put the greenery of your choice or you can put flowers in there. I mean, you do you. I went with this like fern looking stuff from Walmart and I found the exact decal she used on Cricut Access and I'm using my Transfer Ease transfer tape, which is amazing because it does not rip the poster board. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a leftover sawtooth hanger from a Dollar Tree project, hot glue that to the top middle, and we are done. And you will see, it doesn't even look like poster board. I'm just, you guys, I know I keep saying it, but like I'm gonna make tons of these. They are so beautiful. They come out looking so high end. Let me know what you think of this first project. All right, everybody. That was the first DIY in this Dollar Tree home decor video. And I wanted to let you know that today is Try It Tuesday. So Try It Tuesday is a day where uh, myself and other creators, if they choose to, can get together and we try DIYs from other people. So maybe people on YouTube, Pinterest, 
Facebook. It can be any of those places and we just give credit where credit is due. Um, it's a way for you guys to be able to maybe see new DIYers that maybe you have not seen here on the platform before. And um, it's a great way also for other creators to share who they are inspired by. So if people do join the playlist, the link will be down in the description box for you. I will also leave the, um, the channel link and the video link to the people that inspired me this month. So make sure to check that description doc, uh, box down below. And you all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, and if you are digging this video, then make sure to like and make sure to subscribe. And with that said, we could get back into the video. Next one's inspired by She's So Crafty. Now she styled it multiple ways in her video. Um, she did use different supplies, so I'll show you what I ended up using. So I've had these plastic candy dishes for a year. So I decided to use them. However, they were a lot wider. <laughs> I guess that was me snapping and then they're all of a sudden going to turn black right there. <laughs> so I spray, paint, spray painted them with matte black. Now what she used was like a round cardboard box. So mine was a lot wider. So I decided I was going to take the thicker of the nautical rope sizes. I think this one's the eight foot strand and I'm going to hot glue it all around the top. And eventually we will hot glue on the bottom as well. After I'm done hot gluing it, then I'm gonna take my Jenga blocks. You can pre-stain these, however, I was like, not about that life. I was like, nope, we need to make this easier. So I'm taking my Jenga blocks and you want to hot glue them and butt them up to the top of that rope. You're gonna do this all the way around. After you're done with that, then we're gonna take that same, yeah, uh, there wasn't enough to put one more Jenga block. So that's what we did, we improvised. Now we're gonna take that Jacobian stain, which we're gonna use throughout the entire video. It's my favorite stain. It's in my Amazon story link and Amazon live video where I kind of go into more detail about my craft supplies. And those are in the description box. So anywho, I'm staining these, 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 and I'm not too worried about getting it in between the Jenga blocks. I thought it added some dimension to the piece. So, you know, I left it as is. So after we're done staining them, I'm gonna go ahead and get that second strand of nautical rope and we are gonna apply that to bottom. Now just make sure you guys have all of your seams lined up, meaning like the top piece of the nautical rope where the seam starts, make sure the bottom matches that as well as that random strand. Sorry if I'm like heavy breathing right now, y'all. I am pregnant and I am so winded right now. Okay, and then you're gonna put your favorite greenery in there and this is what they turned out like. And I was really surprised because my husband really loved these and I was like, really, you do? Okay, but I really like how they turned out. They're super sleek, very like modern farmhouse. So I hope you guys love them too. This next one is from the Weeks Nest DIY. I saw her make this and I was like, <gasps> Ooh, I so have the stuff for this. And I love her channel because she has a lot of functional DIYs. So I'm gonna take just a square sign from Dollar Tree. This is the t adhesive tile. And I am going to size it up. So for me, I wanted to put it like smack dab in the middle because the way the pattern was, I thought it was gonna look funky if I went over to the side. Does that make sense? You picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, so then I cut this and when I cut it, I I realized quickly that the adhesive like didn't stay attached to it, which was fine. I mean, we don't need it. That's what hot glue and super glue are for, right? So I go ahead and I take it and then we're gonna grab some Gorilla Glue. I'm gonna apply that to the edges and then some in the middle. I'll grab some hot glue and that's gonna give us that immediate hold so we do not have to wait. I will stick that tile piece right on there and then we're gonna start painting it. So I am going to get Rich Black by Folk Art and I am going to give this, I, I just did one coat 
of the rich black. Now, if you don't have these tile pieces, you guys, you could always use puff paint to make your own designs. Um, I believe Nicole used like an actual um, piece of sticky tile that she had left over from flooring. So there are other options if you can't find these at your Dollar Tree. Next, I get my favorite, favorite DIY white wax. I get this from upcycledbybrie.com. I'm gonna take my chip brush and I am going to start, <laughs> I just keep laughing because I know I'm heavy breathing and y'all are probably like, what is going on with this lady? So I apologize. All right, so I'm gonna take that all the way down and you guys, look at how beautiful, look at all the details popping out. Oh, I just think it looks so regal. I don't know, it's so fancy. Next, I'm gonna take, uh, this is the wood plank that comes in the six pack at Dollar Tree. I am also gonna take that crate that is on the top right of the screen, and I am gonna give those a good stain with Jacobian, let them dry, which they dry really fast because they like totally suck up this stain. And then we are going to hot glue them to our tile. So make sure this is flush with the bottom of your tile piece slash sign, because this is what's gonna help it stand up. And then we're gonna take that wood plank and we're gonna hot glue it to the top. Now this had um, like a raised texture to it. So for the tile piece, I did have to go kind of like behind it. You'll see me right now. I put some hot glue and then I get my detailed glue gun and kind of go behind there and make sure that it's really touching all those raised edges. I put my home decal in there, fill it with some greenery, and we are done. So thank you, Nicole, for this inspiration because I think it turned out absolutely amazing. And this just shows how you can take DIYs and just make them your own. Put your own twist and your own flair. Let it match your decor. So y'all, I wanted to quickly remind you that I now have a membership and in the membership, you get member only lives, custom badges, Cricut designs, member only posts. So there's a lot of fun things involved in the membership. I hope you guys will consider joining and that link will be down in the description box for you. Okay, so this next one is also from DIY Home and Crafts. I saw her make this and it was so big. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to try. So I'm going to take these. So mine are mirrors. I believe what she used was um, like the actual signs in this shape. And then the wooden dowels I got from Dollar Tree, but I know, um, not Dollar Tree, I got mine from Walmart, but I know they do have some at Dollar Tree. So I'm going to take the mirror out of one of them. I am going to unscrew all of those little twisty thingy majiggers that are on the back of it. And this is what's gonna be the top of our lantern. So after that one's done, I'm gonna take six wooden dowels. I'm gonna use that same stain, Jacobian, to stain all six of these. And then once those are all dry, which you guys, like I said, this wood like sucks up the stain. I get my um, heat gun and just put a little bit of heat on them and they dry super fast. All right, so I'm gonna keep the mirror in the base of mine. Um, I thought this was great because then you didn't really have to cover it up with anything if you didn't want to. And then, oh, Everly um, colored us a picture. There we go. All right, so with the wooden dowels, I'm just going to put some hot glue on the very bottom of the dowel and then on the side of it. Then I'm gonna put it in where the angles connect. Now make sure as you're gluing these, you are holding them straight up because they have a tendency, they'll kind of like go forward a little bit and then you'll have some crooked dowels, which you don't want. So I'm going to put the, put six of them in there. And then it looks like I, I want to show you like me putting all six in there cause you guys didn't get the point. So <laughs> we're gonna wrap them around. This was super easy. I end up going back in and putting some uh, super glue around the bottom of those as well, just for added security. So you might wanna do that in this step, maybe like, you know, 
dab the bottom with the hot glue and then like the sides with super glue. All right, so now getting the frame, I put all the dowels in there and then I'm going to go ahead and hot glue them in to the little, what, what are those corners? Now Jazz, I didn't realize until after, she doubled up her signs. So like the frames, she ended up doubling them up, which I really did like. I like how mine turned out too though, so I guess it's preference. So make sure to check out her video because you might like her design better. But as you can see, I got that super glue, just put it on the bottom. And then what I like about this, like I said, is that like if you didn't want to put greener, if you like that really clean modern look, then you can just put some candles in here and call it a day and it'll look absolutely beautiful. I put some greenery in there just to kind of show you guys what it would look like. And I did not put a handle on mine like Jazz did. So this is how it turned out. And this is a pretty large lantern and I love it. It just looks super sleek, very modern, like farmhouse or not even farmhouse. Like I think it looks gorgeous and would fit really anywhere within the house. And the bottom is really big, so it'll fit a lot. Okay, you guys, this last one is from Bianca and D. And of course I loved it because I noticed right away it was using one of the kitchen mats, which you guys have seen me craft with before. So I'm going to take the kitchen mat and y'all, if you have never worked with these, do not put spray paint on them. They will get sticky. They do not cure. You have to use, um, I'm using chalk paint. I don't know how acrylic paint works with them, but, um, I'm going to give this two coats of the black chalk paint and I like to stipple my chalk paint on. It allows, not allows, but it keeps the streaks from the bristles away, if that makes sense. Okay, so two coats of this, you can coat it with Mod Podge after so you don't have any flaking. Then grabbing gallon stir sticks, these are from Walmart, Wally World. I am going to measure this out. So I wanted to make sure to cover up that like the thickest part of the mat and then I'm going to mark it off with my pencil. I'm gonna put another one on top and then we're gonna get our third one and I'll just kind of measure where I need to cut that. Then taking my little table miter saw, this is also in my Amazon store, I'm gonna double up my paint stir sticks and then I am going to start cutting these. And this just makes it a lot easier, you know, well, hopefully they're the same size, which I didn't get them the same size. I don't know how that happened. Okay. So after we're done, I'm going to stain them in the Jacobian. I'll be, we're going to let those dry. I do stain the backs of them as well because, well, a half a double S like kind of stain on the back. <laughs> and then after I'm done with that, we're going to go ahead and just let those dry up a little bit. And like, you guys, I'm so good at editing. Ah, okay, so after you see me do all that, now we're just taking hot glue and we're gonna stick those right on. So I start with the bottom. Now, what I didn't do, which she did, and I like looked back at her video, is I should have put hot glue on the end of the, um, ugh the end of the wood, you guys know what I'm talking about. That way the wood was also connected because you'll see right here, I lift it up and then it just kind of like falls back. So I have to get my detail glue gun, go in there, make sure the wood is glued together as well. I take some twine, tan, tie, tie a knot on the back of it. I'm gonna hot glue that and it was like perfect. It was like 12 inches. So it made it super easy to find the middle. And then I'm going to take my little greenery wreath and loop that through some twine, feed it through the front, tack it off on the back. And this you could easily just take off and like change throughout the seasons. But this came out looking very, I'm going to say it, 
high end. Like it looks like a piece that you would find at Kirkland's. For some reason, I feel like Bianca's was like bigger. Unless I, like maybe they make bigger mats. I'm not sure. But you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I really had a lot of fun making these. Make sure to check out the channels and the videos down in the description box as well. And you guys, I'm such a lucky woman, a lucky pregnant woman. Cause as I was crafting this weekend, my husband came down and he made me the most perfect, delicious ugh, breakfast sandwich ever. Like it had an over easy egg in it. He gave me the last piece of bacon y'all. Okay. I'm done. All right. You guys have a good week. We finally got a spot and this is going to have to do. Too bad you guys can't see my t-shirt though. Look at how cute that is. I'm so crafty. I'm my people. True story. Okay. And you want to... We can't get into that position. Okay. What are you doing, my pillow? What? Oh, goodness, you hairdo.